Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to authenticate to UiPath Automation Cloud Orchestrator APIs and also I'm going to show you how you can call the different APIs found under the Orchestrator APIs list provided by UiPath. So let's get started. To get to the list of APIs provided by UiPath, you need to do the following. In your browser, type cloud.uipath.com followed by the organization name. In my case, my organization is called AI Automation One. And then follow that with the tenant name uh, that you want to uh, use for calling the APIs. In my case, the tenant name is called default tenant. After that, append the word orchestrator underscore. And after that, you can put the word swagger slash index dot HTML. Once you call that URL, you will be able to see the same um, swagger definition that I'm showing on my screen at the moment. And if you scroll down this page, you will be able to see a full list of APIs provided by UiPath. For example, if you want to list and see all the APIs for folders interaction, you can find that here. If we expand that node, you can see the different kind of APIs, deleting a folder, getting a specific folder, getting a list of folders, and so on. And of course, there are so many uh, APIs available under this list that will be quite useful uh, for any user. Before calling any of the APIs that you have under the Swagger definition, it's always recommended to make sure that you're authorized to call the APIs. In order to do that, just click on the Authorize button here. And even if you are logged in, it's always recommended to log out and click Authorize again. With that, you make sure that you are logged in properly to the Swagger definition and afterwards you can call any of the available APIs. Now, let's test one of the APIs to see its output here in Swagger. Let's go to Get Folders API and we will click on Try it out. As you can see, there are so many parameters that you can provide to this API, but we will skip that for now and we will just click on Execute. Once we click on that, you will be able to see here that Perl command was executed and this is the requested URL and we got 200 status code which means the call was successful and in the response body here you can see the output of that API call and it's obvious here that we got three folders uh, as an output of this API. If I go to my orchestrator I can see that Yes, I have three folders here, autopilot, shared, and uipath.settings. So the API call is working correctly. All right, now let's see how we can call that same API from outside of the orchestrator. For that, we will use a, a an application called Postman. Postman is one of the most famous tools for testing APIs. Uh, you can just download it from postman.com if you want. We have here the same uh, API that we called from the uh, orchestrator Swagger. If we try to call it now from here, let's see what kind of response we will get. We got 401 unauthorized and that's basically expected because we haven't authorized to the orchestrator APIs, which is what we're going to show you in the next step. Right, now before we call any API from any external application or program, we need to call something called external application from UiPath platform. In order to do that, we need to go to the admin section and click on external applications and from here under the OAuth 
apps tab we need to click on add application we need to give a name so i will give it this name for now and leave the application type on confidential application setting after that we need to click on add scopes from here under the resource we need to select orchestrator api access and we need to select application scopes and from here we click on select all and save once we do that we need to click on add and that's basically how you will end up with a new external application and from here you will need to save this app id and app secret because we will use them in the next few steps all right so to authenticate to the orchestrator apis there is a specific api that you need to call that will allow you to authenticate that api is the one we are seeing here in postman so we need to call https cloud.uipath.com slash identity underscore slash connect slash token that's basically the main url for authentication once you have that here you will need to specify the body of the message in a specific format and the required format is this one xww form uh, url encoded after that you will need to specify a few key value pairs inside that body in order to make that um, call to the uh, to the identity url to work so the first part that we need to pass here is called grant underscore type so that's the key that we need to put in here and the value should be client underscore credentials and then we need to add the client underscore id and client underscore secret and those are basically the client id and secret that we generated from the external application so for me i will just copy and paste these values in here and then we have the fourth parameter that we need to add to the body which is basically the scope and the scope is what we have configured in our external application so if i go back here and open my external application i can see that under the application scopes you can copy these texts and paste it inside this part of the postman uh, parameter uh, this will give you the full list of scopes that we have defined uh, inside the external application and you what you will find is that sometimes this full list will not work so what i have done is i have a short a shorter list of scopes that i tested and uh, confirmed it's working and this is basically what i will need to call uh, my api in the following steps so we need to put that in here and now if i try to call that api what you will see here in the response is a 200 status uh, message and inside the body you will get the required access token that you will need to use in the following api calls to retrieve any kind of data from other apis like for example getting a list of folders inside a specific tenant and that's what we will see in the next few steps right so now let's go back to the get folders api so if you look at the swagger definition here you can see that the required scopes are or.folders or or.folders.read. So when I generated my bearer token in the previous step, I made sure that in the scopes I have or.folders included, which means that the generated token can be used for calling this particular API. If I scroll down, we need to see, we can see here which parameters i need to pass in order to retrieve the folders 
information through that API. So we can see here that we have a couple of headers, accept application slash JSON, and there is an authorization bearer base, the token value, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's all you need to call the get folders API. So let's switch to Postman and see how we can configure that in there. All right, so in Postman, we have the get method defined here and the URL required to call the get folders API. So what we need to do here is under the headers section, we need to add that authorization key. And in the value, we need to type the value bearer, paste, and then we paste the token value that we got from the previous call where we authenticated to the orchestrator APIs. Once we have that defined here, we can test the API. And as you can see here, we got 200 status code, which means the call is successful. And in the output here, we can see we got three records in the output and it shows the correct folders data from my tenant. All right, so as a bonus, I will show you how you can authenticate to the Orchestrator APIs from Studio Web. So as you can see here, I have already created a project in Studio Web, and in that project, I have only three activities. The first activity and the most important one is a HTTP request where I provide uh, all the parameters and all the details of the um, authentication API. And I'm following that with a couple of log message activities where we will be able to see in the log the status code retrieved and the actual content that we will get from that API call. So let's see what we have configured inside the HTTP uh, request activity. If I click on that activity here, on the right-hand side, we will see the details and the different properties of that activity. And what I did here, it just, it's just I configured the request method as post. In the request URL, we used the same URL I used in Postman. And in the parameters, I provided all the four uh, key value pairs we needed for that authentication these are pretty much the same ones we used in postman and then in the headers we added one header for the content type and again it's the same one we used in postman if we scroll down we can see here that we specified the except format as json that's the content we will get back from um from uipath api and in the body format, we specify this type of format that we send in our request. And as an output, we will get the response content and the response status and the headers. And if there are some, any attachments, we will get it there. That's pretty much it. If I test that, We can see here that the call was successful and I got 200 message from this log message activity and also the access token is retrieved successfully as you can see here. And that's all. I hope the content was useful. If you like that video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Thank you.